Ambrosio Ibarra was a man who truly made something of himself. His family immigrated from Mexico, and Ambrosio served in the U.S. military during the Korean War, ultimately transitioning to a career in politics. He would become the first Hispanic mayor in Washington state. Ambrosio's son, Ambrose, was considerably less successful. He struggled with alcoholism and depression, reliant on his family's savings and making extra money through embezzlement. On August 15, 2013, Ambrose, drunk and in a depressive episode, slit his own throat in an attempt to take his own life. He was discovered by his son, Aaron Abara, who is the subject of today's video. Aaron began struggling early in life. For high school, Aaron attempted both an online program and homeschooling, but was unable to meet the requirements for a high school diploma. To complete his degree, and then some, Aaron began going to Edmonds Community College, where his mother worked as an admissions manager. Yet despite being enrolled for over six years, Aaron was unable to obtain a degree of any type. He ultimately gave up on education and began writing, mostly novels and screenplays, none being successes. He earned an income by working at the local gun range, which was one of the few places in which he had some sort of environmental mastery, being highly experienced with guns. Aaron lived with his parents, who kept a large amount of guns at the residence. They saw nothing wrong with this, despite Ambrose having had attempted to commit suicide in the past. Aaron, just as with his father, suffered from alcoholism and depression. However, unlike his father, Aaron had the habit of making his violent thoughts into public statements, such as, I want a SWAT team to make me famous because no one cares about me. Aaron made such statements face to face with police officers he saw in public and via 911 calls. As a result, Aaron was involuntarily committed twice to a treatment facility. Aaron had also been placed in detox programs, and not just for alcohol. Aaron had a drug habit that included amphetamines, cocaine, and heroin. He was also on Prozac, an antidepressant, and Risperdal, an antipsychotic, prescribed to him as a result of his obsessive compulsive disorder diagnosis. When Aaron was 26, he decided to stop taking his medication. His stated reason was that he wanted to feel hatred for the world again. He wanted to make a name for himself, to join his idols, Eric Harris and Cho Hyung Hui. Nailed it. The main actors in the Columbine and Virginia Tech school shootings, respectively. Notably, Cho Sung Hui also had literary aspirations that did not play out. Aaron Ibarra is 26 years old, by the way. Keep that in mind. We are talking about a man heading into his 30s who idolizes high school shooters and 20-year-old incels. And perhaps the word idolizing should be taken literally here, as in the religious definition. Aaron previously took a pilgrimage to Columbine High School, and he would even hear Eric Harris's and Cho Seung Hui's voices in his head. Man, imagine hearing Cho Seung Hui's monotone edgelord voice in your head all day. I'd probably go crazy too. You had a hundred billion chances and ways to have avoided today, but you decided to spill my blood. You forced me into a corner and gave me only one option. The decision was yours. Now you have blood on your hands that will never wash off. After his Columbine pilgrimage, Aaron began planning an attack on Seattle Pacific University. He took a campus tour, which is an otherwise normal activity. But according to Aaron, as we'll see in the coming interrogation, the campus tour was actually Aaron manipulating the school staff to help him plan his crime. In Aaron's mind, perhaps because he could not find success elsewhere, he's created an image of himself as a masterful manipulator and meticulous murderer. Yet, to the outside world, Aaron is just a middle school tier edgelord who's quickly approaching his 30s. And therein laid the problem with Aaron's ego. He wanted to be taken seriously. Nothing epitomizes this more than Aaron's attack itself. On the day Aaron walked onto campus with a shotgun, he found, to his surprise, that no one perceived him as a threat. Instead of feeling threatened, people were laughing at Aaron. 
thinking he was engaging in some sort of performance art or live-action role-playing. When the police found Aaron's journal in his house, they discovered that Aaron had originally planned to enact revenge against those who had bullied him throughout the years, targets such as bar-goers who had disrespected him and a drug addict who had robbed his house. But ultimately, Aaron decided to target unassociated individuals at a large college instead of those who had wronged him in the past. The University of Washington, hey, that's my school, was on Aaron's list, as was Washington State University. Yet, Aaron, in the end, decided not to target either of these large public universities, instead opting for the much smaller private school, Seattle Pacific University, which was chosen simply for being closer to Aaron's home. A true crime of convenience. Or perhaps we could just put this down to Aaron being an underperformer in everything he does, whether that be going to school or planning a school shooting. In any case, the mismatch between Aaron's actual target and Aaron's written intent shows that his written reason for killing is likely a lie. More likely, Aaron killed out of envy. Aaron's perception of success throughout his life was primarily defined by academic success as a result of his family makeup and his own failings in education. As with many school shooters, Aaron grew up in the shadow of an academically successful older sibling. Moreover, as with some prominent school shooters, including Jillian Robbins and Kim Vera Gill, Aaron had a parent working in academia. Other things Aaron had in common with school shooters include previous run-ins with the police, growing up with firearms, depression, idolizing previous school shooters, an absence of romantic love, dating, and sex life, substance abuse, academic underperformance, suicidal thoughts, having a family member in the military, While Aaron ultimately pleaded not guilty by reason of insanity at his trial, you will notice that his statements and claims in this interview with the police to be far removed from the ramblings of the clinically insane. Also notable is the fact that Aaron contradicts himself over and over in this interrogation. He happily sips on the sugary beverage provided by the police while claiming that he merely wanted to leave this world behind. He claims he just wanted to commit suicide, yet still cannot resist asking the police the status of those he shot so as to know his score, which he can compare with those of other school shooters. The main detective in this interrogation gives a great performance, building rapport quickly with Aaron. He understands that Aaron has an inflated ego, but without an equally inflated IQ. Hence, the detective is able to use fulfilling Aaron's need for attention as a tool to extract information. Without further ado, here is the full interrogation of Aaron Ibarra. I've made some edits to improve audio quality and to remove most of the footage of Aaron alone in the interview room when nothing is happening. Enjoy. Well, listen to me. I'm Detective Cooper with Seattle Police. Okay. Okay. You're up here on the seventh floor, uh, the investigations floor. Um, everything's being audio, re- video recorded. You're on, in a police station just for your safety and our safety. Okay. And I just got to quickly do this uh, advisement for you. I think the officers already did to you. You have the right to remain silent. Anything you say can be used against you in a court of law. You have the right at this time to talk to a lawyer and have one present while you're being questioned. If you cannot afford one, one will be appointed for you. Do you understand those rights? Yes, sir. Awesome. Okay, so Ty, do you want some water or something like that, partner? I would love some. Okay, I'll get some water. Um, can you guys just wait out here? Yes, we can do that. Wait out here? Not in there? Wait out here? Go for it. Okay, thanks. Yep. Go and check the shoes. Good. 
Aaron, yeah. here you go. Hold up your hand. There's some cold water for you, okay? There's a cap on and everything like that. I broke the seal up already for you, but uh, have a sip. I'll be back and I want to talk to you in a minute, okay? okay. Hey, Aaron, it's Detective Cooper again. Hi. Hey, um, I just want to get some information from you. Uh, how do you spell your last name? Y-B-A-R-R-A. -R -R -A. Okay. And middle name, uh, initial? R. Okay. And where do you live at right now? Who do you live there with? My parents. And what's their names? Janice and Ambrose. And how do you pronounce your dad's name? Ambrose. Ambrose, okay. And do they have the same last name? Yeah. Okay. What's your cell phone number? Yeah. How you feeling now? Uh, when I opened my eyes, it started getting moist, and it. Uh. Because you got it right around the the cracks. That's uh, the bad part. Uh oh. Okay. I got my partner here. I don't know if you can take a crack and look at her. Uh, I don't know. This is a Detective Duffy. Hi. Hey. How you doing? Okay. Oh. Hey, um, I just want to talk to you real quick sure. about what happened today and yeah. some of the things, and j just get some in, uh, inside information about the whole thing. Okay. Sure. Oh. And uh, just to let you know, it's uh, 17, 14 hours or 5, 14 p.m. Okay. Now, you said you uh, live up in Mount Lake Terrace with your parents? Yeah. Okay. Are you born and raised here in Washington? Yes. Uh, where were you? Were you born up there in Mount Lake Terrace? I was born in, <coughs> in Seattle. Okay. Lived up in Mountain Lake Terrace all your life? Yeah. Okay. Where'd you go to high school at, bud? I was homeschooled through high school. Oh. <coughs> and what do you do for work? Uh, I work at Fred Meyer in Lake City. And uh, what do you do at uh, Fred Meyer? I'm a partial clerk. I'm the cart pusher. I like Fred Meyer too. The yeah. one on Lake City, the one with the rooftop parking type thing. Yeah, the second story. That's a nice. Uh, that's a nice Fred Meyer. They always nice have everything cool. on sale too. Yeah, doesn't have everything, but it does have most of the things, and it's nice to get around that because it's smaller. Um, you work there full time? Oh, uh, part time. Part time. Do you have any other jobs? No. I just started working there three weeks ago. And how old are you again? 26. Be 27 next month. I see that. Um, as far as, I mean, uh, do your parents know where you're at right now? No. I. Uh, they were at work when I started packing my stuff. Okay. Hmm. Um, are you a member of that school? No. Huh? Do you go to school there? Give me one minute. My eyes are... Oh, uh, do you want more napkins or anything like that, bud? Oh, uh, sure. Um, can you just reach in the bathroom there and grab some more of these? Do you want them wet? Do you want them wet? Whatever helps. Actually what? dry, because the wet swishes the stuff around in his eyes. He's got dry ones right here. here you got dry ones beautiful. right here, partner. Here, right here. You got it? Okay. What was the question? 
Do you go to school there? Where? At, uh, uh, what is that, Seattle Pacific or Seattle University? Oh. Um, no, I don't. I, I wanted to, well, I'll explain, uh, well, I know, but I'll explain uh, when we move on. Okay. Because I was talking to a patrol officer that brought you in here, and they're telling me you were telling them stuff about what happened today. Yeah, I was. I, when I got when I got caught, I might as well was just letting it all out. Okay. I was meaning I was meaning to die. Okay. But I got caught instead. Aaron. What? Here's a damp um, paper. Just reach right in front of you. There Put you that go. on your eyes and just kind of hold it there. And then there's some there's some more dry ones right in front of you if you need to use the dry ones. Okay. Okay, so um Are you gonna ask questions or do you want me to just start explaining? Um, why don't you start explaining? Uh, um, I grew up in a Christian home. My my family's very Christian. Okay. I started off being that way. Yeah. And Aaron, I don't mean to interrupt you, but can you lift your hand up a little so you, uh, your mouth, so we can hear you a little better? How's that? That's better. Oh. And I had uh, a high level of OCD since I was 13. And, and I was lonely growing up. I, I felt like I started to become psychotic or something mm -hmm. because... I, I notice I've been living in fantasy than reality. I I made people want to hate me because I thought I was part of them, but when I was really part of what I was part of their crew when I was really bugging them. Okay. And then <coughs> because I kept going to the same spots over and over because it was part of the routine, and I needed certain belongings and and, and certain routines to keep me sane. I don't know why, but it just it was just like that. What do you mean belongings? Like I needed certain things to for my routines, like my cologne, my bedroom furniture, and my like just certain things, like just like basic things, like what people like. I can't really ex explain like everybody's OCD, but like I need certain like belongings until and they can't go until it's ready until a certain time and that's what made your day normal yeah okay I knew if something affected that it would it would automatically change my mental state it made, it made the compulsions <coughs> go from good to evil but I couldn't I couldn't stop it and I knew I couldn't treat it on my own and, but but my the first time when I was 21 when my brother was doing drugs, he he <coughs> let his junkie friends come in, and and one guy that kept bugging me, he took my cologne which I used every day. I started to lose it and started making death threats, um, telling him telling his acquaintances what I was going to do to him. Well, let me ask you this: Have 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 you ever had contact with the police in any of these times or anything like that? No, I was just going insane. Um, <coughs> well, not insane. I was just losing it. I was, I was just. I had no. My OCD. I have requirements. Mm -hmm. I had to take it in my own hands to get the respect. Well, not just respect, but every situation had a price to pay. What do you mean situation? Like if someone threw off a routine or someone took something from me that I needed, uh, there had to be a price to pay, whether if it was. Uh, well, in the cases like that, like <clears throat> if they had to hurt or kill someone, it was just a high level where I couldn't handle myself. Have you ever hurt anybody before? No, and okay. I knew I was being safe about it. I knew I was. I stayed away from those kind of people mm -hmm. because I was trying to be good. Mm -hmm. I wanted. I had. A, I knew I had a future to live up to, and I wanted to be the good guy. Mm -hmm. But. My parents didn't understand what was going on with me, and when I was 23, I had a, I had my bed 
that I used for a while, but they didn't talk to me and, <coughs> and wanted to work on, on it with me. And, and they took out the bedroom furniture because they, they, they said it had to go. I told them, wait. I told them not yet. And, and because it wasn't time that they just wouldn't listen and and then I started losing I, st I kept drinking daily they ignored my drinking and told me to go to therapy and it was all about therapy because are you seeing anybody right now what do you mean are you see seeking anybody for uh, any type of medical condition or anything like that right now uh as a mental mental physical drinking whatever oh uh, uh I stopped seeing my psychotherapist because I didn't I couldn't afford it. Who's that? Samantha Good. Is that person local? Uh she uh her office is in East Lake. When did you stop seeing her? It was recently. It was about a probably a about three months ago maybe. And when you say East Lake, are you talking down on East Lake or East Lake over like on the east side? Uh, east Lake, um, just past the U District. Oh, okay. <coughs> okay, so um, you've been having these issues and stuff like that. So uh, I knew I I could have gone to therapy. It just wasn't time yet. But people were trying to force me. Even my friends were bugging me because when my, when I was losing. Losing it that day. <coughs> Therapy just kept getting into my head. I started getting stubborn and not going. And don't. And later, after d I was done drinking, and, and like after a year of drinking, I just went to. Uh, I went to. I found. I found Samantha Good. Uh, the main reason I went to therapy was to get everyone off my back. I knew it wasn't going to do anything, but I gave, decided to give it a shot anyway. Who was paying for uh, <coughs> Dr. Good? My my parents did at first, <coughs> and then they had me do it because <coughs> they realized I was drinking while I was seeing her. And <coughs> were you uh, prescribed medication or anything like that? Yeah, from my psychiatrist, uh, Heidi Iwanski. How do you spell her last name? Uh, I W A N S K I. And what what she prescribe you? The Prozac and Risperdal. <coughs> she she diagnosed me with transient psychosis and OCD. But when I realized, but when she told me I had OCD, I realized that it's more, it's on a higher level than what people really think. Like I can't control myself no matter what's going on. Okay. I can't control my mental state. Even if I wanted help, I couldn't stop wanting to do the things that I've been planning on doing. Okay. Um, so, how I mean, how long have you had these feelings? Uh, the evil feelings or the good ones? Both. Uh, since I was 13, the the good feelings mm -hmm. until 23 when my stuff got taken away, my bedroom furniture got taken away. So in the last three years you've started having these bad feelings? Yeah. And Can you describe the bad feelings to me? I started, uh, I just felt nothing but hate, 100% hatred towards the world, towards everyone. I threatened to massacre the local bar once because uh, I just wanted everything and everyone to die and then Columbine came to mind. I don't know how, but it just hit me. I've been, when I was watching the news when I was a kid, Oh, Columbine, like Eric Harris just came into my head. The mastermind of the shooting. Right. And I kept identifying with him ever since the, the past three years because he just made everything so exciting. He made hate so exciting. Well, I mean, in Columbine, they used explosives and stuff like that. Did you ever thought about that, or did you, that cross your mind? I'm not smart enough to make it... Uh, Make uh, to go on the internet and figure out how to make bombs. Okay. I, I just I just go by my instincts of what I've learned. Okay. And what have you learned? Um, how to uh, shotgun, rifle, and pistol shooting. Okay. Um, my family are marksmen. Your mom and dad are? Well, my well, my dad and my brother are. Okay. What's your brother's name? Joel. And uh, do you have any sisters? Yeah, Brandy. 
B R A N D I. Any other brothers or sisters? No. Okay. <coughs> and one of my issues was going on, humiliation started going because uh, all my friends were worried that I was going to kill them in the, during the death threats of the bar and I couldn't look at them the way they used to. They they treated been treating me different. Like they've been closing in on me. And I've been getting paranoid. And, like the world was going against me. And right. How old is Joel? Joel is twenty five, twenty four, going on twenty five in February. And how about Brandy? <coughs> Brandy is twenty nine. Okay. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> that pepper spray is getting to me too a little. Uh. Um. So, you've had these bad feelings since about uh, 23, the last three years. Yeah. Did you talk to this with your psychiatrist and your uh, and Dr. Good, too? Yeah, I told them everything. Um, they, they know they know a lot more than anybody, than, than, uh, well, especially Samantha Good. She knows almost everything I've told her. We had a lot to talk about in the past two years. They ever, uh, did they ever c uh, confine you or anything like that? What do you mean? Like... Um, involuntary commitment or anything like that? Uh, voluntarily commitment? And like at a hospital to be evaluated or anything like that? No, I, no, I refused. They suggested it, but I refused because I've been into the emergency room for drinking. It was uncomfortable being in a hospital. I, I totally understand that part. Um, so um, you talk about what you know as far as your family being marksmen. Uh -huh. I mean... My, well, the men in my family, yeah. Okay. Does the men? Does everybody own guns in your family? Oh uh, well, yeah. Oh well, yeah. Um, most of them were stolen. Uh, when my brother was doing drugs, he, we also housed a a, a charismatic psychopath, is what I like to call him, because he manipulated my family <coughs> and, and he stole from us and and made him think that it was my brother that did it. And Who was that? His name was Jerron Bernal. He's in my private journal. I have a diary in my truck. I told the cops. The white truck? Yeah. Did they? Re did you read it? I haven't read it yet. The, these dark feelings made me go from Christianity to admiring sadism. And that's when the hate started feeling really good because I felt that God betrayed me. I'd been praying for him to help me, but... But he, I didn't feel like he didn't answer my prayers. I can understand that feeling. Um, I got a question for you. Yeah. Um, when you when we started talking about this, you said uh, you had packed your things this uh, before you started on this thing. Um, I know you had a shotgun. Mm -hmm. What else did you pack? A hunting knife. And of course, I haven't talked to any of my detectives up at the scene. But what type of shotgun was it? It was a Browning over and under Satori. I use that for sporting clays. Okay. And, of course, I'm talking to you here. I haven't seen your shotgun or anything like that. Did you have it modified? Was it cut off? <coughs> anything like that? <coughs> no. I, in case I got pulled over or got caught or something, I hid it in a garbage bag like if I was packing some, uh, like if I was just stuffing stuff in there. Okay. I assembled it in the shock in the in the truck because my windows <coughs> were tinted. I knew no one could could couldn't see. Okay, so you had this shotgun. You had a hunting knife. Uh, anything else? I packed seventy five rounds of ammunition because I thought it was gonna kill and injure more people. Okay, what type of ammo were you using? Just uh, I was using um, Dove loads. So birdshot? Yeah. Steel or lead? Lead. Remember uh, what number? No. Okay. And you said lead, right? I'm sorry. Yeah. Okay. <coughs> I've been planning. <coughs> I've been planning to attack SPU because uh, because I had to stay local. Washington State University was supposed to be the main target. Isn't I wasn't really targeting anyone specifically. I just had hatred towards the world, but I didn't want to attack my own city. Right. Let me ask you this. Um, so you didn't have a handgun or anything like that? No. I don't even know how to get into my dad's safe. Okay. And you had 75 rounds with you? Yeah. Did you have the rounds in, still in your truck when the when you were stopped I, by the cops? 
No, it, ju it was just a <coughs> in case I got pulled over. Oh, okay. Because <coughs> I had to be prepared. <coughs> I want to take a sip of water. Uh, oh, it's just, I don't know, it's making it worse when I'm trying to open my eyes. Well, you don't have to. I mean, because it's the, the it gets into the mucous membrane and the eyes and everything like that. And the more you rub it and stuff like that, you just kind of have to just sit calmly uh -huh. uh, and try not to touch your eyes okay. and stuff right now. Um, so you you broke the shotgun down and, and then put it in a garbage bag before you took it out to your car this morning? Yeah, I put my backpack in there so it'll look like it, there's no shotgun in there. There's just a b bunch of stuff and my sweatshirt I have on now. How long is the barrel on a shotgun? 32 inch. Okay. So you assembled it in your car when you got to the school. Yeah. Um, the officers were telling me, you said something about that y you planned that, and you told me this already, but uh, that you've taken a tour of that campus? Yeah, two Mondays ago. I manipulated these uh, of quite a few students, but but I used two girls to give me a private tour. I didn't even have to ask. I, I acted like a transfer student, and the way I approached them made them want to give me a tour. Where'd you meet them at? I, I was just walking around. I don't know specific areas. Did you get their names? Uh... I met this one black girl, she was really nice. Uh, I don't know how to pronounce or, I don't really know how to um, spell her name. I don't know how to spell her name, but I think you s pronounce it as Adroja. Okay. That's the closest I remember. And then <coughs> she gave me about a 10 minute tour, really helped me out in my writing, so I told her I would single her out for doing that because I didn't even have to ask, she just volunteered, so I showed a little more remorse for that. Okay. Did she show you the whole campus? As much as she she knew. Okay. Um, is she a English student or was she a, a science? Fourth, a science? Yeah. Okay. I think I remember that. <coughs> and is she from the United States or from uh, another country? I don't remember. Okay. I know she lives in a dorm. Okay. And uh, remember if she was a freshman, sophomore, uh, senior? I don't remember, but I remember the second girl being a. Uh, being a, a sophomore. Okay, and the other gal, was she a white gal or black gal? Asian? She was a white girl, her name is Kyleen. I mentioned her in my writings too. I showed remorse for her too. I told her I, I said I would single her out too. She a science student also? Uh, she, was, she told me she was into children's ed. Oh, okay. Uh. Um, So two Mondays ago, is that what you said? Yeah. Okay. I and even talked to the um, the academic um, person. I I manipulated him too. I was acting like I wanted to transfer there. Where were you tell Where were you transferring from? Where was it stored? Edmonds Community College, where I was been, where I was going a few years ago. So this was ac academic advisor. Yeah. Remember who that was? I don't remember his name, but he wore glasses. He had short blonde hair. Um, he, he should remember me if, he, if my face is on the news. <clears throat> okay. Um, I wasn't really trying to get fame. I was just uh, trying to, I was really just trying to express my hate, and how I really felt about the world. I understand. Um, so two Mondays ago, remember what time you were up there? Uh, about one, one-ish, one-thirty-ish. I remember checking the time when I was in the, when I found the the Auto Miller Hall. That's where I met Ardroja. Okay. That was about 1.15 maybe. So you started, did you just show up at that hall and, and they you met them there or how'd no, that go? I was trying, I was doing a hunter and fisherman's technique by scouting my area. So I'd be right. going to, that's why I went to the campus early to scout my area. and. And uh, <coughs> and I asked, I went up to a few students, guys and girls, asking them where the math room is, and that's where Autumn Miller is, because I told them oh, I'm going to, I'm thinking about transferring here, blah, 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 blah. Why the math room? All right, I'm just curious. Oh, just to be casual, because I, I told them I was doing business major. Oh, okay. 
and then you ended up at the Otto Hall, or what's it called? Otto. Otto Miller. Um, Otto Miller. One one girl told told me uh, oh, where it was, but the campus was too big for me to to recognize because I'm not having experienced universities. Right. And then I pr approached this this guy. He was about 19 or 20. Mm -hmm. uh, I was trying to make sure where I was going. He was a nice kid. Um, I don't. I didn't get his name or anything, but uh, he he was white, t uh, short, blonde hair. He he told me where. <coughs> he told me uh, he pointed to the direction where I was where I was meant, meaning to go. Okay. So did the two girls show you the inside of the Otto Miller Hall? Yeah. Okay. How much time do you think you spent there? Yeah. Oh, I just well, uh, first time. Well, um, actually, not those two <coughs> girls. It was. The, the that what <coughs> the one guy and girl <coughs> oh. drink a little water bud that one guy and girl I told I mentioned right they, they led me there and I just started exploring the hallway okay did you go through the whole building or I tried to go as yeah, uh, I just went to the first part, and then that's when I met Adroja. She was talking to her blonde friend. Oh, okay. I was going to approach the blonde girl, but she was opening the door to get to class, and then I caught up with Adroja. Okay. I don't know if that's exactly her name, but that's the best way I can pronounce it. Um, do you know how many floors are in that hall? Uh, two. Okay. Did you ever make it to the second floor? Um, when you, on your scout? No, I just made it to the first. I just wanted to clo the closest area I could find. Okay. Did you check for exits and entrances and things like that? Ingresses, egresses type thing? Like for students to escape? Yeah. Um, I knew there was one in the back, but okay. But um, there was a long run. <laughs> okay. And I mean, I know, you know, the police caught you and everything. You, you, this was your own plan, right? Yes. Okay. No one else is helping you with this or anything like that? No. The guidance of of Eric Harrison, Sun Lee Cho, in my head, okay. helped me out. Especially Eric Harris, he was a, oh man, he was a master of all shooters. Mm -hmm. Let me ask you this, so when you scouted this two Mondays ago, mm -hmm. you checked for the exits and entrances to the, the building, you never made it to the second floor? No, I didn't bother. So, how long do you think you were there on your scout? Uh, in the building, I was just explore, ex walking up and down the halls to make sure I, I know where there's classrooms and make sure and and yesterday I made one one more stop, but because I had to make sure people were there, because just in case I didn't, I was in the middle of finals or classes got out earlier. Yeah, and um, remember what time you were there yesterday? Around three. So there were people walking out of class, but okay. there were more people than today. Okay. So people, I'm assuming people got done with their classes early before finals. So did you go there yesterday at three? and come back because this, this it sounds like this whole thing started about 3.30 I mean yesterday when you was it like a dry run yesterday then? Uh, yesterday yeah I, I just I just had to I just made a drive to make sure I saw people okay. I didn't go in the building. Oh you didn't go in the building? I just had to make sure people were walking to, to their buildings. Okay and you saw people coming and going? Yeah. Okay um, so this morning I mean uh, when did you I mean when did you decide to do this this morning, or was it last week, or did you have this day in mind, or how'd you come up with this today, to start today? I was trying to go with what Eric Harris was planning, like pick a day, but I couldn't do that. I wasn't, I wasn't as organized as he was. Right. Oh. Uh, so I just, I just had to play it by ear, and and <coughs> but I had to make sure I had to go b before classes um, were. Before classes were out, because okay. finals, or get, people were getting ready for finals, and people there's only certain days. And how did you know they were having finals? I got information from the the academic person. Okay. And I and I snuck some information from other people, like my brother-in-law said he was going to Seattle U. I asked um, I asked him when, um, so he's on. I snuck I snuck. I was being sneaky and said, so do. You, so you're on finals this week? You said no, a couple of weeks, but that was last week. Okay, and um, so but you you basically learned from the academic advisor two Mondays ago. Yeah, I, this would be finals week. Oh, uh, what? The um, I think next week was supposed to be finals week or this week, but I had to go before uh, before I knew I was too late. 
Okay. If I had, if if I knew it was too late, then I would wait over the summer and then pick and go into a sometime in the fall. Okay. So this was kind of your last shot before last the school shot. vacated, vacated, right? Yeah, and I had to, and I. I wanted to get out of this world so bad that mm -hmm. I was like, I can't wait anymore. I can't attack Wazoo or Central. I'm just going to go local and use what I have because I've been trying to save up for the white, the the right weapons, the w right equipment, and and I was and I was trying to be well organized. But I my OCD kept making me want to spend more money, and I was disorganized with that. Did you buy the shotgun yourself? Oh yeah, from a from a member um, at the ranch, but that was like years ago. That was I was about nineteen <coughs> at the time. Did you? So if, if I run the serial number on that shotgun, it's going to come back to you. Um, I don't know if I put in my name, but I know I know he wouldn't have. Uh, I I don't want to get him in trouble because no, he had won't. okay because um because this is what I was on my good side. Right. And and now nobody could knows no I'm sure nobody could tell that I was able to do this because I was being sneaky. I didn't want anyone to know. I just wanted to be done and over with and die. Right. Um so do you have other weapons or anything like that? I mean are, is there more stuff in the truck that you know, when I look in the truck am I gonna find more weapons? No. I'm being honest. I'm a man of my word, even right. ask my friends. Um and at your house? Uh, do you have other weapons at your house, at your mom and dad's house? Um, no, they got all got stolen from Jerron. They got the first kid that I hit out out in the outside of the building. Right. He kind of looked like him um, at first. Uh, well, it's like, have you heard of the story about Alyssa Boost, Alyssa Bustamani, the kid who, the girl who killed her nine-year-old neighbor? Yeah. That's kind of like what she said. Um, uh, you're like, I can't believe I, I'm doing this, but once you do it, you're like, oh my God, it's so fun. Right. Um, and the guy, the, you mean today, the first guy you you shot at? First, yeah, first guy I shot at. I was so pissed at him because he didn't take me seriously. I hate it when people disrespect me, but right. I can't let out what I'm incapable of letting out my true feelings. But okay. but one, but I first felt I was able to get respect once I made that first shot. Uh, well, <clears throat> I want to get to that, too, and I want you to explain that to me in detail, but... <coughs> I might not be the way I w wanted to put it, but it's right. going to be something like that, yeah. I want, I'm want. i still at the point where you packed every... You broke the shotgun down, you mm -hmm. got 75 rounds. Yeah. You bought all that yourself? Yes. Okay. And you I bought that weeks ago. I hid it in my room. I knew okay. my parents would respect my, my, my room, and... I hit bolt I hit bolt cutters there because when I was going on my rant about killing people when I was on my issues, right, and so my parents locked them up, and I broke the lock. It, it had some metal on it, so. Okay. Um, so you only have that shotgun. You brought that knife. You broke the shotgun down, but you reassembled it in your truck. Yes. <clears throat> so what time did you leave your house today? Um, I got on a, on a slow start. Um, I left around 2.15, but there was a little bit of traffic. And I was getting ready around 12.30, getting ready for the day. Uh, <coughs> I delayed my time because my brother called, and I called him back. He didn't suspect a thing. I didn't even act suspicious. I didn't even feel remorse for what I was about to do. For right. I didn't even feel for how my loved ones felt. It just went. It's true what they say. I even wrote this in my journal. It's true what they say. When you go through a lot of stress at a period of time, mm -hmm. you start to lose lap. You start to lose emotion and not feel anything. Okay. Um, it's there's a big change that I felt. So, you packed all these things. You load them into your truck. Mm -hmm. And is the truck register in your name? Uh, and mine and my mom's. Okay. How long have you had that truck? For about three years, maybe. Um, what kind of truck is it? It's a Chevy S10, 2002. Chevy S10, is that the smaller version? Yeah. Okay. Um, and it's white, right? Yeah. You don't happen to know the plate, do you? No, not by heart. Okay. Ah, I don't even know my plate nowadays with so many letters and numbers on them. Um, 
So you pick, put everything in your ride, you assemble it in there, um, and you get there, um, and you just go to the uh, Otto Miller Hall there? Yeah. How, how close right, did you park? I parked right across the street. Okay. Right facing the entrance. Okay. I was uh, before I parked in the back where two people were um, like doing a little project. Right. Um, but I didn't I didn't pack everything up yet. I had to make sure I could go into a back exit, but the exit was locked, so I couldn't get in. So I had to I had to drive around and park. That today. Towards, towards the entrance. Yeah. Okay. Um. So you park out in front of the entrance, assemble your shotgun, mm -hmm. um, and I don't know if the officers recovered more rounds on you when they took you into custody or did, how many rounds did you take with you? Uh, I packed 50 on me but I had 75 total. Okay. Because that, that's all I could sneak into my sweater <clears throat> pocket. Okay. So when they took you into custody you had, they took rounds off you? Yeah. The the security that, that took me down they they reached in my pocket and, and shoveled them out. Okay. I was um, reaching for my hunting knife not to kill more people because I know I got caught. I was trying to slit my throat to die, and but they took that away from me. Okay. And what kind of hunting knife is it? It's a skinning knife, with a with one of those hooks on the. Oh yeah. Yeah. It was just like a dying wish, but it's like it's not when people say kill yourself and not take innocent people. It's like one of those things where you just like when your hate gets to you and you're like. I want to do this because this is how much I hate people. I turned against humanity, but couldn't stop wanting to. Oh, well, I understand that feeling. Let me ask you this: so, when you get out, where do you encounter the first guy? Because again, I haven't been out there. Well, I was trying to hold two people hostage just to have a little fun. Right. But they didn't take me seriously. They were laughing at me. Did you show them the shotgun? Yeah, I said, "Hey, you two, get inside." They, there's one girl and one guy. They were talking to each other. Like, they were just, they were, they were just standing there laughing at me. Okay. Yeah. And then and then I pointed to that one guy that I shot and I said uh, said, "Hey you. Uh, um, hey you get inside." And he said, "Haha, you think you can scare me with that thing?" And that's when I got mad. And I was going to shoot people anyway, but I was really mad at him for doing that. Okay. Was that the first guy you shot? That was the first guy I shot when he turned his back and okay. started walking. I put one in his shoulder. I think it was his shoulder. I didn't see any blood, but I, I saw him go down. What's the capacity of that shotgun? How many rounds? Oh, it's a double barrel, so two. Okay. I accidentally drive fired my second barrel, so that's how I got caught. I couldn't, so I can only load one in, one round in because of. But it's over, like, it's it, over under, right? Yeah. It seemed like the firing, either the firing pin stick stuff or that round was a dud, and I just left it in there. Okay. So basically, so you're down to one one barrel. Yeah. Okay, so you're like, you fire, then you have to reload. Yeah. Okay. And you said the second round, or the second round in the second chamber didn't go off. The first guy you shot, you, sh you shoot him the first time? Yeah. Did you pull the trigger to hit him with the second time with the second barrel? I tried to hit the girl that laughed at me oh, with okay. the second <laughs> barrel. And then, and then, uh, but she hesitated for about five seconds from being shocked. Right. And then she took off running and while I was trying to pull the trigger. So I ejected that one and then and then reloaded and went inside the building. Okay. And then what did you do? Um, uh, there were, I saw a few people inside. When I was walking around the first time, I, I, saw, I saw the guy on his laptop. I, I, I didn't point the gun at him, but I showed him the shotgun. I said, uh, he took off his earphones and I said, I don't want to have to hurt you. The, the guy out there, he, I said, stay calm. I don't want to have to hurt you. He said, okay. He looked a little shocked because um, I had a gun in my hand. All right. And I said, I, I shot a man outside because he disrespected me. I don't want to have to hurt you. He said, okay. And then a girl came downstairs. I said, uh, <coughs> I said, I don't want to have to hurt you. She laughed at me too and just kept walking. That made me mad too. She was like, I don't get respect from people. They don't take me seriously. I was growing up, people wouldn't take me seriously. They could, they would just laugh at me. So the gal that was coming down the stairs, when you told her, when you showed her the gun and she laughed at you, did you shoot her too? I shot her. Yeah. Okay. I think it was in the arm. And then she screamed. Okay. And then, 
and then the guy I, and then the guy I was talking to at first he took off running. Okay. And I tried to, and I tried to fire my second shot again, but I realized that that was the bad barrel. Okay. But and I got and then I tried to eject the shell. Okay. I ejected it and tried to put a new one in, but I didn't break it in all the way, so that way it took. That's why it took me so long to reload, and that's when the security came out and maced me. How many people do you think you shot? <coughs> I remember shooting two, but there were two girls in back of her, so I'm, I, I probably hit a couple of them too because <coughs> uh, because because uh, they said I had two more victims. Um, who said that? The officers. Oh, okay. Let me ask you this. The first guy you shot, you shot him when he turned his back on you? Yeah. How close were you to him? I was just about 15, 20 feet. Okay. And the girl that was coming down the stairs, how close were you to her? 12, 15 feet. Okay. And you saw other women behind her? Yeah. Okay. And um, so, but you were targeting the gal that was laughing at you? Yeah. Okay. But with... Dove shot, it dove shot, right? Yeah. Steel, you know, with a 32 inch lead. barrel, it's probably a big pattern, huh? Yeah. It goes out farther for it. The longer the barrel, the longer it'll go out. You've shot the shotgun before, haven't you? I'm well experienced with shotguns and rifles. Okay. Um, why, I mean, I have a curious question. Um, why bird shot versus like double odd or something like that? Double odd, uh, they're just only six rounds in buckshot, right. it won't, when it spreads, it won't go, it won't, the pattern won't be as close as you want. Right. Then you have to shoot, and only one lead ball will hit, but it won't be a big impact as much as a, as a 30 out 6 rifle would. Right. But if you do a, but if you do a, a lead shot, a bird shot at close range, that will disintegrate a human face. True. But you said, and you were using lead, right? Yeah, and plus I'm using an over and under barrel that's not good for buckshot. Okay. Um, yeah, I was just curious. I, uh, because that that was made for um, sporting clays, not made for heavy duty loads. Okay. And why a shotgun versus like a handgun? Because i um, because I know my lead on on shotguns. Um, I know how to hit moving targets, pistols. Right. I'm less accurate. Plus, my dad had a smaller barrel. Uh, and which is light, which I'm um, easier to hit with heavier guns. Oh, okay. Hey, Aaron, you said that you uh, you bought the the ammo just recently. Where did you buy that at? Adventure Sports, where I usually get my hunting equipment. And where's that at? It's in Linwood. Okay. Did you buy the knife there too? I bought the knife at Big Five, just before my bear hunting trip. When was that? I was about. Three years ago, maybe. Okay, so that was quite a while ago. Was that also in Linwood? Um, that was in uh, Aurora, c close to Edmonds or something. Uh -huh. Big five for the knife. Yes. Yeah. But that was a few years ago, three years ago. And you, you actually went on a bear hunting trip? Yeah, on my good side. Who'd you go on that with? My brother-in-law. Did you get anything? No, it was no, no. We uh. <coughs> we decided to try again later because mm -hmm. we left a little bit later than we wanted to. The bears were already uphill. And where did you do the bear hunting trip at? Over in Randy Creek, just past Stevens Pass. And how long ago was it that you bought the ammo? Was it like, did you say three weeks ago or did I miss? Uh, I bought it about about three or four <coughs> weeks ago. I bought that ahead of time because I, I had to... I had to spend money. I was doing temporary work before <coughs> Fred Meyer. I had to. I had to. Um, I had to. Uh, what I was gonna say. Um, I I had to. Uh, sorry, I was, this was distracting me from all the maze. Okay. Um, <coughs> I <coughs> I had to uh, buy buy it early enough because I had my last part. <coughs> um, take a little sip of water, bud. Get that out of your throat. I had <coughs> I had my little, okay. I had my last <coughs> twenty on me. I had to get something because 
because my time was running short. <coughs> Is that better? Yeah. And if I wanted to die, I, I had the price had to be paid first. It's like a requirement. I couldn't stop. Did you did you buy all the ammo in one one purchase? Uh, I bought the, the first box just about a week or two, or two weeks <coughs> before the others. Right. I had to get something just to accomplish something first. How many rounds in a box? Twenty-five. Okay. I bought three three boxes total. On three different occasions. Uh, two different occasions. One, um, what the first time was about two weeks before the others. I bought two of the other at the same time. Okay. Um, and so security took you in. The security sprayed you with pepper spray. Yeah. Okay. As you were reloading. Yeah, I could have got away with it if my if I knew my barrel was for one new. If I knew my barrel, my bottom wood barrel was was a dud, right. and and also if I knew I would have broken in more because the shot the shell won't go in if the barrel is not um, if the if you don't break it in all the break it break it open all the way. And where's the shotgun now? Police have it. Okay. Did you see the police take it? No, but they put it in a room. I know they have it somewhere. Oh, okay. But it's there at the scene. Yeah. Okay. So the school security pepper sprayed you, and how soon after they sprayed you did the cops uh, show up? Oh, uh, they were pretty quick, faster than I expected. Um, it was probably about maybe it was minutes, probably about maybe four to six minutes. Mm -hmm. uh, that's what it felt like. I don't know the exact time. And then, okay. Uh, uh, well, no, no disrespect, but the, how the way it felt, just I don't know feeling that hateful power just when I heard the SWAT team was there it just made me feel good mm -hmm. but that's but that was me feeling my hate when did you hear the SWAT team was there the officer said that the, the SWAT team had <coughs> SWAT team was there and uh, and they had their keys or something oh okay um, well, what if you ran into the SWAT team guys oh uh, well, if I had to, well, I've been wanting to die, so if they gave me no, if they <coughs> gave me no choice, I have no choice but to shoot at them to get them to kill me. Mm -hmm. Main priority was to die, but I had to pay the price somehow. Right. It was just a requirement. My OCD just gets to me. Okay. It's like extreme or something. Then, okay. like no matter, like I've been trying to warn people, like I. No matter how hard I try, I can't stop. I can't control who I am when if something affects the the <coughs> good parts of it. Aaron, you said you were on the Prozac and the Risperidol um, when you were doing the counseling. Did you stop taking those meds, or are you still taking them? I stopped because I was stubborn and, and I wanted to feel my hate. And plus, I didn't think it was working. I just. I just love the hateful feeling. I, I was thinking, what, is, what was the point of being good when the world's against me? How long ago has that been since you stopped taking it? Uh, I've been taking it off and on, but I've been, I haven't been taking it for about six months, maybe. I lied to my psychiatrist. So when was the last time you saw your psychiatrist? Uh, I was, I don't remember the exact time. I mean, like a couple of weeks ago, or has it been months as well? Uh, I think it was, I'm sure it was months, it, it was kind of quite a while. Okay. If I had a choice to not feel this way, I wouldn't have done this. I wouldn't okay. have wanted I to understand. die. I wouldn't have wanted to kill people. I wanted to live a happy, successful life, but my hate got in my way. The compulsiveness was just overcoming me. But let me ask you, you knew if you go to the school and you start shooting people that you're going to have to answer to us, right? Yeah. Okay. And um, and you know, you you just can't go killing people. But I understand, you know, you don't like the world and everything like that. Yeah. Right. Yeah. I no. I und no. I understand everything. I was actually expecting that answer, but I don't know. I just I just, I just couldn't stop wanting to. Right. But how do you think that your your parents are going to react to this situation? Uh, they're gonna be very devastated. Ever since I got my DUI, they got they were pretty devastated too. This is gonna really hurt them. I mean, do you think that they're gonna somewhat understand because of your OCD and your 
and the way things have been going, or uh, is this going to be a total shock to them? This is going to be a total shock to them. Like they knew I'd been having the issues, but they, I don't know, I just stopped caring, and I stopped caring about... Do you want me to call them and let them know you're here with us? Yeah, that's fine. Okay. Um, sit tight for a second. Do you need anything else? Water or anything like that? Mm, no, I'm fine. Do you want me to get parents' information? I got it. Right oh, there. you got it. Okay. I'm sure my friends will be really hurtful, <coughs> but I'm going to be nothing but scum to them now. Oh, yep, we'll see. Aaron? Yeah? Hey, it's Detective Cooper. I got a question for you. Sure. Are you feeling okay right now? Mm, same, as, ah, same as before. Okay. Are you on anything right now? What? Have you been drinking at all today? Oh, it doesn't surprise me that they would ask that. <laughs> <laughs> I just, I'm just i thinking of you, man. Uh, Are, have you been drinking or anything like that? No, I'm sober. I'm clean. Okay, any medicine, I to medication, to, anything like that? I had to stay sober to stay motivated. Okay, sounds good. And have you talked about doing this with anybody? Or you told anybody about this? Um... No, the, the when I was fueled on alcohol at the time, when I was threatening the massacre of the bar, that's the only time I told someone I was going to do something like that. I'll just get my signature and get the names. Can you see good enough right now? Mm. No, I've been trying to open my eyes, it just won't work. Um, do you have any problem uh, giving us authorization to get your medical records from your doctors? Um, as in your permission? Well, we need your permission. Yeah, go for it. Okay. Use my pen. I got caught, so now I have to accept it. That's all I'm going for. I was well, I appreciate you cooperating with us, that's for sure. Real quick right here, I, I need you to open your eyes so you can see some of this, so I can read it to you. Okay. This is just an authorization to disclose protected health information. Oh. Um, I'm going to put your name on here. <coughs> well, while he's doing that, I just have a couple questions sure. about the the OCD. You were kind of and and I'm asking because I I don't under <coughs> I don't understand oh. it. I don't know much about it. Mm -hmm. You were saying the thing about the bedroom furniture and about the cologne. Is they there any other examples <coughs> that you can tell me about that um that would really get under your skin? Um, I, I can't confront anybody. That's why I've been holding my anger into, I've been taking people's crap for so long. If, like, if I, if I get hit or anything, then I have no choice but to kill them. So that's why I've been backing down from fights and all that. Okay. And so People started not to take me seriously or anything. When I said I would mess somebody up, I didn't mean fighting. I meant sadistically. Okay. And you've never hurt anybody before? I never wanted to. When I um, when I get your journal and I start reading your journal, uh -huh. um, are you going to have notes and stuff about this in there? Oh, yeah. I'm, I'm telling you some things that's going to be in there. What else? What? What would you say? Uh, I'm, t I'm telling you what's gonna, some things about that's what's going to be in there. What's in there? Oh, d just what we've been talking oh, about. Oh, okay. So you've been writing all this stuff down? Yeah. Before you acted it out? Yeah. I wrote it just to get people to understand, even though there was going to be no forgiveness. So in essence, you thought maybe you might die during this situation and you wanted people to know? That's the plan. I was planning to die this whole time. Okay. But as far as your... I'm just shutting the door here. Uh -huh. as, as far as your OCD, someone taking your personal belongings was real bothersome to you, such as your bedroom furniture and your yeah. cologne. Uh -huh. And then confronting people or standing up to them was really bothersome. Was there w anything else that was that really pissed you off? or? Uh, ever since I got through my hate, it started building up because the guys at the getaway were talking crap about me and I had thoughts about killing them, poisoning their beer. I mentioned that in the, the getaway to the bar? Yeah. 
Okay. It's in Mount Lake Terrace. Me and my dad would go there. Yeah, I know where you, where it is. Mm. So, Aaron, uh, real quick, if you can take a peek at this, I'm going to read this to you. Okay. Um, this is an authorization to disclose protected health information, and I'm going to send one to uh, each of your doctors, okay? okay. And uh, the information to be released is a uh, summary of medical history and treatment, nurse doctor notes, social worker notes, emergency room records, lab or diagnostic tests, radiology records or films, or any other medical information related to you. Okay. <coughs> this states, I understand that the information in my health record may include information related to sexually transmitted disease, acquired immune deficiency syndrome, AIDS, or human immune deficiency virus, HIV. My health record may also include information about behavioral mental health services and treatment for alcohol and drug abuse. By checking the box at the end of the sentence, I choose to exclude the more sensitive information about behavioral mental health services and treatments for alcohol and drug abuse. I understand that I may be charged an additional fee for the removal of this information. Hmm. Do you have any problem with us looking at that stuff? No. Okay. Health information shall be released to the Seattle Police Department. In addition, medical facility staff may discuss my medical condition and any treatment with the assigned detective or his or her designee. I understand that this authorization expires in 90 days unless otherwise specified and that the disclosed information is protected under state and federal law 42 CFR Part 2 and RCW 70.24. I reserve the right to revoke authorization in writing at any time prior to the 90 days uh, period expiration, except to the extent that the facility, facility which is to release information, has already taken action in accordance with it. Sound good? Okay. Okay, now I need your signature right here, partner. When I tried to open my eyes, it got bad again. Okay. Um. Can you look real quick? Oh, uh, no. Man, whatever he had in that thing, oh. It, it's an oil based pepper spray, and that's why it, it stays with you a lot longer. That's the only problem. I had to give the security props. He was pretty brave. Well, I did have I did have a dysfunctional barrel, so it made it easier for him. And it was my fault for not breaking. When the was the last time you test fired your gun? Uh, um, over at the range. Yeah. Oh, that was a, that was a while ago. Probably. Oh, okay. That was that was probably about twenty one, maybe. Okay, so it's been a while since you fired that shotgun. Yeah. Okay. Um, think you can sign this right here for me? Can you look a little? Um, not yet. Okay. I'll come back and get it signed with you, okay? Okay. Now, uh, we're going to see about getting some dry stuff so we can wipe your eyes a little better. Okay. Hey Aaron. Yeah. It's Detective Cooper again. Hi. Um, do you have a computer at home or anything like that? Oh <coughs> yeah. Um, and were you communicating on any of this about this stuff on on your computer, or do you have anything stored on your computer? No, I didn't put anything on there. I okay. just writ written everything on my in my journal. Journal. Um, how about Facebook or anything like that? Um, the only thing I did on Facebook today was um, trying to. Uh, I, I messaged uh, I messaged one of my friends saying we should have. Uh, oh, too bad we didn't. We weren't able to kick it because I don't know, just to get a reaction from him. <coughs> okay. <coughs> also to feel some remorse. It was a mixture of that. Okay. Aaron, how you feeling? Uh, still the same. It's okay. Still strong. Try to use the um, the dry paper napkins right here, and try to wipe in <coughs> on your eyeballs if you can. I know it's going to be a little abrasive. Hey, um, huh? when you went up there today, uh huh, and you got out of your car, what were you wearing? I was wearing my my fish shirt just to be casual, and to, and it's the last thing to remind me of the good times because I'm big on trout fishing. Okay. Did you have that sweat jacket on too? I put it on um, before I started loading up my shelves. Oh, okay. Do you have glasses on? <coughs> I have always worn glasses. What kind? What type? Uh, I don't know what kind. They, they're probably on the. They. Like they got glasses? No, they were. They're regular glasses. Are they my, prescription? Prescription, yeah. Oh, okay. They got knocked off my glasses when he took me down. Okay, but nothing else. No. Okay. Hey Aaron, how are the 
doing? Well, working on it. Still the same. Better? Ah, still. Oh, I don't know what he. Oh, that oil stuff, whatever that was in that spray. <laughs> yeah, it kind of takes a while. Um, we need to take some photographs of you, if we could. Um, so <coughs> I need you to stand up for me. I'll kind of help you out. I've got my partner Frank here. So if you hear another person here, I'm going to kind of guide you over here towards me. And then we have just kind of a big white wall right here. But I'm just going to have you stand first this way. And then I'll just ask you to kind of rotate as I take pictures, okay? Okay. I don't know if I could open my eyes really you well. Don't, you don't have to open your eyes. <coughs> I use the bathroom after this? Certainly. That would be perfect because oh. we need to get your clothes. That water really hit me. Yeah. Okay, I'm going to have you turn to your left. Perfect. Turn to your left again? Yeah. Perfect. One more turn. And then face me again. Turn this way again. Can you hold your hands out for me? Just straight up. No, just like straight up this way. Kind of fan them out like that. Can you flip them up like that for me? Do you have any tattoos or anything? Just one, my uh, shoulder blade. Okay. Let's go ahead and uh, take your sweatshirt off. Walking here, do you see the chair? Nope. Okay, the chair is right behind you now. So, you want some more water? Yes, I would love some. And you can continue with these damp paper towels. My nose keeps running. Yeah, it's from the the spray. Oh. Kind of opens up your uh, mucous membrane, and oh. and because it's hot. Oh. And it makes your nose run. Oh. You know, like pepper. Would make oh, I see. Makes you snotty. Okay. So it's that's normal. So just there's tissue or napkins in front of you if you just want to wipe your nose. Your voice reminds me of one of the drug and alcohol counselors I had. I like talking to her. Oh. Yeah. How long have you been in counseling? For drug and alcohol or to, or psychotherapy? Both. Um, drug and alcohol I was in for a year because of my DUI. Uh, I completed that. Oh, okay. Psychotherapy, two and a half years. Oh, okay. Do you have a diagnosis? Uh, OCD and transient psychosis. Oh, okay. Alrighty. Need anything else, Aaron, or are you good? Um, yeah, I think I'll be fine. Okay. Knock on the door if you need something, okay? Okay. Oh, you can see 
better. Yeah. You look much better. <laughs> <laughs> hey, um, so here's those medical forms. Okay. Um, I read them to you already. Basically, I just need your signature on this one right here. Okay. You want a candy bar or anything like that? Bag of chips or anything like that? Yeah, I'm hungry. Okay. And what'd you say? And that one right there. Same spot. We're limited on our chips, but uh, I'll see what I can dig up for you. Sit okay. tight for a second. Okay, I'm going to give you a choice. Cool Ranch or nachos or both? Oh, Cool Ranch. <laughs> you want both? Oh, yeah. <laughs> that works. <laughs> okay, sit tight for a second, but we'll no problem. Have, uh, uh, take that as You want a Coke or anything? Um, or water? Yeah, or I'll take stretching? a Coke too. Coke? Alright. Sorry about the delay. We're just uh, oh, getting some here. Yeah, when I drink a lot of coffee, the gases in my system get held in as well. Yeah? Yeah. Did you have coffee this morning? Yeah, I drink a lot. I'm a mean addict. Oh, you are? Yeah. Just plain old coffee, or are you a Starbucks person? Uh, not as much Starbucks as I used to. I, I go to espresso stands, coffee tastes better. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Um, what was I going to ask you? Oh, uh, Detective Cooper went to get a search warrant. We're going to get um, a blood sample, okay? Okay. And so we're just waiting for that to get signed. Okay. And then we're going to um, uh, go up to the hospital, get a quick blood sample. Okay. And then book you into King County Jail. Okay. Okay. Do you have any questions or... Um, what's the blood sample for? Well, um, just to make sure that there's no drugs in your system okay. or alcohol or anything no. weird like that. Okay. Um, it's just kind of one of those precautionary things that we do. Okay. Okay. Um, and do you have any questions of us or um, that mm. I can answer for you? Mm. Mm. No, it's pretty much all up to you. Okay. Well, if you have a question or you want to talk about anything. Oh, I do have one thing what? to ask. <coughs> what? Um, how the people that I shot, how are they doing? There's a reason why I'm asking this. Okay, what's your reasoning? Oh, um, I thought about what I did. And because since this is supposed to be a suicide matter, I, I stopped caring, but... When I pictured his body dropping, her screaming, felt a little different. Now that you're not dead? No, I'm not dead, yeah. Okay. Well, I don't know the status of everybody, um, but I can try to find out for you. Yeah, I've been thinking about that, and I didn't, I felt like I didn't care at first because I was supposed to die, but now things have changed. Like I still don't have that kind of like that empathy mode where I, I can shed a tear for it. I've taken it lightly because I don't know how to feel that anymore. But I do think about it. Yeah. You still have that hate in you? Do you still feel? Yeah. It's, yeah. Still, it's not really I want to destroy the world anymore. It's just that um, I just want to get out of this world. So do you think doing this event kind of kind of like release some pressure from you? Yeah, kind of expressing it made a lot of pressure go away. Because I never held in, I, I've held in my anger for so long and, and the stuff that was making me go crazy just turned things around for me, caused humiliation which caused even more hate and I was going out of control, I couldn't control my who I was and, and uh, even when people 
say they understand. They don't know how serious what I was going through. They, like, I was unstoppable, like, un like a freight train not with no conductor. Yeah. Like, I was just on the go. My mind, my state of mind was on the go. It was just complete darkness. Yeah. Do you sleep well? Do you sleep at night? Yeah. You sleep okay? Uh-huh. Okay. Well, I'll see if I can find out for you um, about the, the people. Um, like I said, I've been here the whole time, mm -hmm. so um, I haven't been out there where some detectives are out working in the scene and whatnot. So. Yeah, because now I, if I did have a chance, I wish I'd just turned the gun on myself, but I still couldn't, I couldn't help myself. It was just getting too exciting. Like the thought of Eric Harris and Sung Lee Cho doing their rampage is just, and the and, and mixture in my hate just made it. So those guys are kind of like heroes to you? Oh, they became idols ever since the past two years when they started going into my hatred. Which one is Sun Lee Cho? He's a Virginia Tech shooter. I started admired the bloodshed that was described, and I, I admired Eric Harris's hate, the way he just, uh, like, he hated everything and everyone wanted to destroy the world, and no one was, everyone thinks they're too good for him, just has to die, and just mixed mixed in with my hate and like it's like like when I said everything has a everyone has a every situation has a price to pay, like that was part of it. It's like the price that was the price to pay. No, it just doesn't matter anymore. Things are different now and I don't know. Well there's a prison out there anyway, so it won't be any different. People I can't trust being miserable all the time. Um, have you ever been suicidal before this? Yeah, I don't really tell people, but yes, I have constantly, especially when I'm during my drinking. It's like, all this, like when my stuff got taken away, my parents wouldn't understand. They didn't even want to understand. When They're they, trying so they took your bedroom set away? Mm -hmm. Why did they do that, Aaron? Because I've had it for a while. They said it had to go. I was trying to tell them I was trying to tell them, but they kept denying it and, and ignoring my issues, and I just kept drinking my, w drinking my way to sorrow. I kept scaring my friends, and they couldn't think that they didn't do anything. I kept begging for my family's support. They just, they just said go to therapy, but I, but that wasn't the case yet. I, they had to work with me on it. They couldn't. They were trying to force me. Did they go. replace your bedroom set, or did you yeah, have to sleep on the floor, no, or what happened? Yeah, they replaced it with the hospital bed that my cousin, my, that my mom's cousin slept, uh, that was in my, um, in my great aunt's room before she passed. Mm -hmm. she, she thought just taking it up from behind my back would just make everything go away, and I have no, I have no choice but to accept it. I was trying to tell everybody that's not it, and they were just trying to, they were denying me, and they were ignoring my issues until I said I went to therapy, and everything was becoming worse for me. I, it wasn't, I was trying to use alcohol as a tool to keep myself calm because I know how I was getting, because mm -hmm. I knew I was going to pick up a knife, either stab myself or stab someone off the street. So I, I tried to find a way to medicate myself. And, right. that's, and that's been going on for a year because I've been going crazy. I needed something to calm me down, but I drank too much alcohol where that mixed in. But I, but, but with alcohol, I can only express it with words. I'm not capable. I'm, I can't. I'm not focused to do physical things. Only when I'm sober. Yeah. But ever, but I've been underestimated by my family because I'm not the kind of person that would do that because I'd back down from fights. I get all emotional. There was a reason why I was doing that it's because because that O C D thing it, I had requirements. I couldn't I couldn't stop myself. I couldn't even tell myself no without even doing it and 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 that's why I was backing down on fights. If someone confronted me, I would, I would threaten them and say, oh, and, and if they dare try to hit me or steal from me, something's going, something's going down. One of us is, someone's going to die and it's not going to be me. Right. How, how was high school for you? I was homeschooled through, through high school. I wish I went to high school, in a way, because 
I was lonely, and I think I went into a psychotic mode where I was living in fantasy. Did your mom homeschool you? Yeah. We went to a resource program. I made quite a few friends there, but we all were all just kids with attention. Yeah. All right. But I wanted people to understand how serious I was, what was going on. And I, I knew what I was capable of, and I was trying to get people to understand. I knew going to just going to therapy wasn't going to help it. I need I need them to work on it with me, and because there's a certain time when there, there's a cutoff time until I can move on to the next step. And things were about to. And then I, when I was done with the school quarter, things were get re getting ready to be. Um, get better for me, I was starting to mature out of that out out of that stage and go on to the next one. Okay. All right, my man. Well, let me go see what I can find out for you, okay? Okay. And we'll try to get this as quickly as we can. I felt like I realized that I am no Eric Harris at all. But I felt like I did before, going through my hatred. Now I'm thinking about what happened. If someone would have done that to me, then that would have been horrifying. I could have been, oh, I uh, wonder what that would be like if I was him. Yeah. Okay. I still can't shed a tear for them, but I do think about what happened. Okay. Now that I'm not dead, it's now a little more serious than... Now you just kind of got to deal with it, huh? Yeah, now, yeah, now I got to deal with the consequences, yeah. Yeah. What do you think should happen to somebody that does something like what you've done? Um, uh, uh, I would say if they if they're unstable, just give them the help they need. If they're stable, then just make them deal with with what they knew was coming. Well, how how would how would one make them deal with it? Mm, I don't know what you're asking. Well, if it was somebody else that did what you did, mm -hmm. and they were sitting where you're sitting, what do you think? Sh what do you think the consequences should be for that person? Well, I know I'm going to prison. But so you think that's the consequ the correct consequence for that? Well, I don't know. Well, if it, it all depends on their situation, but um, like I know some people go to mental wards in the hospital. So that sometimes helps them. But some people who who don't even care what they did, like let's say, you no, know, let's say, like. Like, um, you want, like, should we use that shooting example or just any cr That's murderous okay. crime? That's okay. I was just wondering if you had thought about that. Yeah. You know? Well, I knew what would have happened to me because what I did, I did what I did, and I got caught, and I have no choice except whether I was going to prison or a uh, loony bin. Okay. All right. Well, I will be back in a little bit. Okay. Okay. Uh, All right, you knock on the door if you need something. Sure thing. Okay. Okay, are you ready to go? Yeah, can I use the bathroom one more time? You can. If you liked this video, please hit like. It helps me out with the YouTube algorithm. Also, please subscribe if you haven't already. Most of you are not subscribed. If you really would like to help this channel out, consider signing up for my Patreon. This has been your host, Damon Varial. Thank you and happy holidays.